Good afternoon, everyone. It's nice to see some people have joined me today to have a look at some health thinking tips and tricks that I've learned along the way with regard to managing jobs in RFMS. So I hope you're all having a good week. Most of what we're going to look at today is all around the save filter button in our black binoculars. And I'm just going to start first of all with water entry. Normally you would come into a screen like this and it would be empty. And often during the, you want to make sure that all invoices that have been generated get job costed, all orders that have been installed get invoiced and job costed, and just have a wee general tidy up of the orders to make sure that everything stays up to date. So a heavy user of the black binoculars and the safe filters is where I used to live. And the first one that I'm going to show you is using my estimated install date. I will be putting in my dates in here for the install period that I'm thinking about and see if I have anything that has been installed where the job is still undelivered. Undelivered being not job costed. So I would come in here and I'd raise it in here for um, a bit of do it some time back. So let's say it was 0112.19 to the 31st. Oh, let's do it for today's date. That's what we'll do. And undelivered only, if it's been job costed, I'm not particularly interested in it right now. So I'm going to say OK. And it's going to return me anything that's got an install date during that date range that I requested. So over onto the right hand side, you can see the estimated install date here is the 17th of the 12th. And I haven't generated an invoice yet because you can see that the invoice and the bill dates are empty. So now I'm sitting here as an administrator and I'm thinking, oh, these have been installed. Let's go and see if we can't get them invoiced. Secondly, what I would be looking at is after I've got all my installed invoiced, I'd be wanting to check to make sure that here again, so beginning of these dates, um, and I'd say, well, what have I invoiced perhaps that I haven't job costed yet? So we've set the bills out. So again, I can do that. What invoiced up to today, and leave this as undelivered, and I can say okay, and it's going to return everything that I has, that's not been job costed yet. For me, I'm up to date with my job costing, right? But I did have some jobs that had been installed that I needed to check that maybe I need to send out the invoices for. At the end of the month, there's a number of things that I used to do um, in terms of the open orders and, and uh, the outstanding things too. And what I used to do was just have a look and see if anybody had short paid me a small amount of money. For example, if they had the bill was for 4,468, uh, 4, but they only paid me 4,465, um, leaving a balance of $3. I wasn't interested in chasing that up, but so I would check to see if I had anything with a small balance owing. So over here on the left hand side, I'd pop in with balance owing, and it would be all because I might not have job copied everything yet. And here in this balance here, I've got from, um, I want to know about everything with one cent up to, so let's put $10 in there and see what I can pull back. That's going to give me orders with a small balance right on. And it's not giving me anything. So in here would be what I would be calling any order that had a small balance. So I don't have to worry about those short payments, right? Another thing about payments is often you would have someone who would overpay you that might be in credit. So in this example, I'm thinking we would have um, minus 0 0.01 up to minus 999, I think it was. I can make it work. All right. And I want anything with a balance that is in a negative, regardless of what, what it is. Pull that up, and I don't have anything. I'm sure I did. So just, I'm going to just try um, and pull up. Ah, 
um, why I'm not getting anything at the moment. The one is because I've got a date from the unit. Why I'm getting one doing that. So let's just go back to the 0.01 again, or the 0.10 cents up to the $5 and see if Karen that date helped us. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to pop four in here um, with the balance of five. But just clearly showing you my database is um, obviously quite clean. I, I thought I had a few things that were done. Um, I'll move on to the next one so that we're getting it. So I'm just going to pull up everything that's in open order, undelivered. So it's over here. All right, and it might be that you've got all the lines delivered or the providers are balanced. Okay, so you might say, I want to have all the orders, regardless of what they're at, they're in an undelivered status and they're ready to job cost, and you've got all of these lines blank. I'll just make these blank so that we can have a look at that. And it's going to pull up everything. Again, I wonder if I'm not in the right database. Let me just try another database for everyone so that we can hopefully um, get some better data out of there. Let's go into my test. Um, just open up a few windows for everyone. I'm going to go accounting and I'm going to go to inventory as well. So I'll just open up all of those so that we've got it. I'm just going to try something first to make sure that we've got these going in again. Now, what I'd like to talk about while I'm just opening up the screens again, I'm, I'm hoping that you're all aware that you can save these filters. I think I'll show you something in there later on, and I want to open something in inventory because I want to show you something there as well. Before we start, I just want to remind you that there is some, when we're doing filters, maybe we can. I need to be a little bit patient when I open order entry, otherwise, it gets locked on the processing server. Yeah. When we're doing filters here like this, you've got the save button down the bottom. So let's just save one. I'm going to do everything that's installed up to, to today from the 1st to the 12th, 19 I had last time. And I want, I'm interested in my undelivered only. And I know on a regular basis that I'm looking at everything that's been stored from the beginning of time up to the end of time that is sitting in undelivered status. I can create a name for this and I could say um, installed, not job costed. Okay, and I can save it. So here I go and I pull up the information that I wanted, which is these. Now, the next time I want to, let's just mess with the data that's in here for a moment. And the next time I want to, um, so now I've lost that filter, the next time I want to do the same thing, I can just highlight and right hand click on the binoculars, okay? And I can have my filters listed here and I can double click on it and it works it out and it pulls you back through. Now, just so that everyone's aware, the thinking of RFMS on my save filter that I have is tomorrow when I come into work and I want to do the same thing, this date here, the 20th second 20, should update to tomorrow's date. So there is some logical thinking in the way that the save filters work. So let me just go over a few of the ones that I've shown you so far again today. 
is the install date here will, will fill for out the install date so that you can pick the undelivered, get them invoiced. If you've invoiced something and you're missing something, um, then what we would do is we would have a check on our invoice, beginning of time always, so in case you've forgotten something from the previous month up to today, undelivered or unjob posted, let's see what we can pull out. And I've got three invoices here. Now I've invoices, invoiced, but I haven't job posted. I could save that filter as well. You can do the same thing here with your balances or small balance write-offs. You can do the same by creating filters for everything that's got an order, regardless of the status. So I'll put that to the end of time. For undelivered only, and what do I get? Or I've created the providers and they're balanced, and you can undeliver again, and you can bring those forward. If you're using, in a coming version in version 19, if you're using Schedule Pro, you might want to filter on some of your Schedule Pro statuses. In this demo database, install is um, del delayed, and you want to follow up on your delayed installs and know which orders are there, then you'd be able to pull those back. Now, these Schedule Pro statuses are created in Schedule Pro, you can't, and you see them on orders. So let me just show you. We'll open up this order for Christine Ogden. And this order has a status of install schedule. It's grayed out in order entry, and you can't adjust it because this looks to Schedule Pro and pulls it back into the order. But very helpful if, you're, if you use that for things as it's suggested in the, in the drop down box here, I've created things that are complete, it's ready to drop, or still closed, it's delayed, it's, um, it's, I've got post job maintenance, I've got a remedial to do, and you can filter all your orders based on those sorts of things there. All right. Um, the other thing that I like to do is I like to look at, if you're wanting to look at or, um, your open orders to see what is undelivered completely without any of these dates filtering, and then you're going to get a look at, basically it's your pipeline of work still to go. And it pays quarterly at the end of the year. You might find some that, I'm going to quite everything, Um, that are very old and aren't progressing so that you could have a look at it. You can see when that date that, that was created here, and you can click on that and it will sort by that. So I can go to the top of the page and it's going to show me all of my um, very old ones. So I've got some here that are showing for 2014 and it begs the question in this database, are they real? All right. This one here has money against it. So, and it's paid in full. So again, why am I, why is it not job costed? They've paid me the money, why haven't I done the job? Okay, so you can have a look at things like that. Other thought is, so this is an order entry, how I keep track on making sure that I'm getting all my orders in lots of job cost and to the p and in a timely manner. I'm gonna to move to inventory for a moment because now in the inventory, they have you have the same ability to do that. I'm going to go to roll inventory. And I've got the black binoculars, just the same. And what I'm going to be looking at at the end of each month, what I want to know is my anything that's got a small balance. And it might be anything up to 1.9 meters. Okay, I don't care what is received, but if I've got a balance, of, of, of that amount of money I want to know about. So let's just, again, you could save it to small balance write-offs if you want to have a look. And so I've got a few, four, four rolls here. This one's got 0.8 of a metre left. This one's got 0 0.01, 0 0.3, 0 0.5. Not worth anything. Likely not to be in your warehouse, as you know. And so I would come in here and job, uh, stop adjust them out. Right, and it gets them out and off your records in a timely manner. The other thing that I used to do once a quarter, I would come in here and I would be looking at my short ends. 
And so anything from two meters up to five meters, um, I want to know what they are. And I've got these things here. Now, if there are a particular buyer or a customer, that makes sense, you're going to have it there. But in this example down here for Riverview Pebble, we bought in 50 meters and we've got, we've used up 25 on a job and we've got 23 reserved. So this two meters here would be scrapped or not worth anything. Okay, so I paid $100 a meter for this carpet. So if I have two meters left over on a roll, I'd be lucky if I could sell it for $100, let alone um, have it at a cost value. So I used to review my short ends and orphans once a quarter to maybe revalue them down in the cost. When you do a stock adjustment for um, revalue, it's going to go credit inventory on your balance sheet and it's debit and cost of materials. And this is um, when you close the month, it's going to make this automatic adjustment. So it is going to impact your PL. So you want to be mindful of that when you are revaluing your short ends. Likely your business should have some sort of um, policy around who can do that and when to do it so that you can uh, minimize the damage to your PL. All right. Um, what else do I do in here? And I look at, and here I look at um, my soft reserves report. If I, oh no, sorry, wrong place. Let's go back here to wrong inventory. And I've got my, I'll oh, just pull up my rolls. And show it. And I have got my um, soft reserves here. And you'd click on that icon, and if you put in the soft reserves, then you, they would be listed here. Now, quite often, we used to have our salespeople would keep things to themselves, thinking, oh, I, I, need, I don't want anyone to use that this 20.3 meters here. So they would come up here and they would create it, and you don't have to have an order, but if you're twisting off them, right? And I want to say um, 15 meters of this for two days. Well, just while I go out and do a measure. So what it does is it shows here that I've got a soft reserve. So now they can only sell, for, only available to sell is 5.3. Now, of course, keen salespeople would say that, particularly when you go into promotion time, would say, oh, I want a soft reserve back for my client, and they go along in here, but they forget to come and get rid of these. And so it's always handy to be able to come in here and have a look at it. All right, so that's your soft reserves. The, uh, let me just, the other one that I look, like to look at was my reserve report here. Now this is your actual reserve report and you can do it on items or roles only. I'll do it on both so that you can see it. And it gives me a report on everything that's on reserve in my system. And it's just a nice check to make sure that nothing has been reserved too early. This promise date here on the report is actually the install, estimated install date on your order if you're using that. So if this is too far out into the future, you might want to say, well, why are they reviewing it? Why are they reserving it if you need it for another job or you're wanting to manage your inventory just in time, you'd be interested in having a reserve report here. Yeah. Right, I'm just going to pop over to accounting now, I'm driving all over the place. But in accounting, I used to do this on a weekly basis. That's a report that's called the Payables to Inventory Comparison Report. All right, so let me just pull it up for a period of time, hopefully that will be helpful to us. Now you, I always tick this because all I'm interested in is the value of my inventory in my inventory module versus the value of my inventory in my AP and GL. Okay, so let's just print this to screen. And it just shows you all of the mismatches. If there was a mismatch, inventory column here is the value that in your inventory module and your payable amount is what's been posted to your inventory balance sheet number. Okay, so 
I first of all go to the bottom of the page and I'm looking. I've got 11,866 in my inventory and it mismatches with my balance sheet number. All right, so now I'm going to go back and have a look through. Some transactions are fine. Return found transaction means you've found a piece of inventory in your warehouse and you want to pop it into inventory module with a value. Of course, because you've found it, your a, you don't have an AP to generate from the supplier, so therefore the um, general ledger posting on this occasion um, should expect a mismatch here because it's going to go debit inventory and credit cost of materials in your p &L. So when you see the invoice return found, you are going to have a mismatch and that is acceptable, all right? The other thing that can be a little bit daunting when you're doing it is when you split your payables in AP, like this Cavalier Greenwood one, the original invoice was 8569585. And I've split it into two lots. So I've got an SO1. So here I've got 9196 on my original invoice and I've split off 273.85, but if I add my 892.215 or my 273.85, it's going to equal like 9196. So I'm very happy with that. That's not a true mismatch, okay? Here's another split example with Feltex. The original invoice has the inventory attached to it and the payable has been split. Twice. We've got this one here, SO1 and SO2. Right, so those three records add up to my 2152. Let's go to the next page. And I've got another return found of $35 in inventory. I won't find a payable because I'm going to have a journal entry that I'm going to post at the end of the month. Or immediately, if you are on an ERRM version of RMS database, it's going to but nonetheless, it's going to make the appropriate um, a journal entry to your PL. All right. So that's a few of the things that I'm doing every week, month, to make sure that my orders and my AP records and everything stay in sync. Now, with regard to this one, I'm doing this weekly and I'm asking the accounts payable person who does the receiving costing process to run this report on a weekly basis. Why do I ask that? And that's because the sooner you find the error, the easier it is to fix. If you can fix it through the inventory module while you've got quantity available to sell. But if you have used it all up and it's been sold before you find the error, then the error needs to be fixed by way of journal entries in the general ledger. So if we do receiving costing on a weekly, daily basis, then on a Friday, run the report, have I made any errors, go and fix it. Okay. Right, one last thing that someone suggested that I just mentioned as a side point here is attachments and AP records. So let me just pull up some AP records here for you to have a look at. And if you wanted to, you have the ability to attach your invoice that you've received via email to the actual payable record here. Right? Now, in versions up to 18.99, you will have to save the uh, PDF invoice to a folder and pull it in by clicking on the insert button, um, get your attachment and you go and find out where it is, all right? So we can pull it through here and we send it to our mess and now we have an attachment, all right? On the order. And then we can come and view it by just going up to the attachment again. In the version 19 that, we're, that will be coming out, um, you can do this um, by dragging and drop. So if you have your PDF invoice in an email, then so long as you can open your email, you can drag the PDF, drop it onto these words here, and it will save directly onto it. I guess it's 
we're finding more and more clients are wanting to do that so that they don't have to go up the back searching for the original document um, when they want to review it again. All right, so that's 25 minutes of um, show and tell in terms of saved filters and a couple of other pointers. I just wonder if anyone's got any questions. Um, I'm very happy to answer some now or we can deal with them offline, whichever uh, way you want to do it. Anyone got any questions that might come? Like mm -hmm. All right. Um, well, then that's my saved filters for the webinar for today and a little bit of housekeeping to keep your box tidy as we work towards the end of financial year, particularly for us here in New Zealand, it's going to end in a little while, um, end of March, of course, for most of us. So um, have a look and see if they can be of use to you. And if you've got any questions and you want to get some help setting up some safe filters, then feel free to reach out to us on our 0800 and 1800 numbers and we can assist you with that. Have a great day, everybody, and that's the end of our webinar today. Oh, Lynn, you've got a question. You've got your hand up. I'm still here. Yeah. Well, would you be able to unmute Lynn Harris for us, please, so that she can ask a question? Oh, Lynn wants me to show the attachment feature again. Yes, I definitely can do that for you, Lynn. So, you go into accounts table, I'll just open that up again for you. You can pull up some that are big piece. Okay. So you highlight the record that you want to, that's a voided record, that's not really much good to me. Maybe I want to put my visa statement on here, London, it's only $77, very low. I will come up here and click on the attachment. If you're on an 18 version, you're going to click on the green plus. Right. And then you're going to go out to a number of folders. So you can go out to any folder you like. This just happened to open up here with a lot of PDFs, all right? But you can click on any folder that you want to that you want to uh, click on. Um, all right, I could go to demo database and click in here. Oh, that's not really much good. Let me see if I can find something else. Um, Here we go, here's a word document, don't want that, but I can, I can attach that. So you just double click on the record that you want to bring through. Okay, and you have a record. Now the thing to remember is to make sure you say send it to RFMS and then you have something there. All right. And that gets it in. Alternatively, and I don't have my emails open on this link to be able to show yourself, what you're going to do is you don't have to print in version 19. You don't have to do the insert, is you're just going to go to your web, you're just going to go to your Outlook um, and you're going to drag. Let me just see if I can make sure it will work on here, but let me just. No, I, I haven't got my Outlook open, sorry, so it's going to, it would take too long to open up. Um, you're going to drag your PDF from your Outlook message, pop it immediately over top of drop. Outlook attachments here and let it go and it's going to appear up here. If you've got something that you want to do, we can do it offline if you like and we can uh, have a bit of a couple of practices with you so that you can do it. All right? And then what happens is it attaches on the site. All right? And then you just highlight the record and come up here and you can view the record once it's attached. Maybe I want to swap the um, this one. The great big report. All right.
but just views like that. So hopefully that answers your question. I can send you some screenshots on how to do that if you want to, Lynn. Um, you just let me know. Right. Right. Um, oh, Lynn, you've got another question? Just uh, right, how can I? I don't know what version you're on. If you go down to the bottom of the screen, hopefully, you can see the bottom of my screen. Look very down to the bottom, hopefully, you can see it. I've got 19.0.1.26090. That's my version, right? The other way you can go is to go to your navigator, your main screen here, and down here, navigator 19.0.1.26090 is the version number of the RFMS that you're in. Okay. By the way, people, you won't want to upgrade to any 19s. If you're on 19, that's fine, but just if you're on an 18.99 version, I'm recommending people stay there for a minute. They've been, um, they've got a new release coming out that's fixing a number of things. So um, I'd rather that when we saw that come to the market before we push, we encourage anyone to go to the 19 version. Just keep the heads up on that one. All right. Um, anyone got else? Okay, does it look like they've got any more questions, everyone? So I'll get Kylie to um, get in the session. Thank you very much for joining us. And if there's anything else we can do to help, just, as I said, ring the 1-800-0800 numbers and we'll be sure to uh, bring you and help you. Thank you very much. Bye.